uh, we're very fortunate today to be uh, interviewing um, Grant Patterson. Grant's well known throughout Australia. Um, we're actually in Leo Jewett's loft. Um, Grant has come over from Canberra. So as I said, we're very glad that we've got a, been able to interview Grant today. Grant, how did you become interested in pigeon racing? Well, I was uh, brought up uh, in Maylands. I went to Wellington Road School. Uh, several of the guys at Wellington Road School, one of them being Bob March, who was a very, very good pigeon flyer, uh, was in my class at school. He took an interest in pigeons. Uh, he had a mate who flew them in Glind, and uh, we just, by association, got to share some birds, and I flew as a junior I guess for some years there and then uh, like most people do it about 15, 16 gave them away and uh, came back to them and around when I was about 30 odd. How would you keep your um, pair your birds up Grant? Would it be winners to winners or would you try to keep the certain line? I've always tried to keep uh, the line going wherever possible. I, I believe that if you've got successful pigeons through your pedigree, you try and keep them and their offspring through the pedigree as much as possible. So I've been very much a lion breeder, but hopefully if you've got enough good pigeons and you breed enough winners, put your winners to winners. I think the object of all racing is, be it horse racing, greyhounds or uh, trotting racing, is to develop very good raised pigeons and with those very good raised pigeons uh, well, well racers and not race horses uh, greyhounds to keep the very best of the strain together so I would like to think you put as many of your winners together as you can. Would you put a bird in the stock cloth that uh, hasn't had a race? Uh, at times I suspect that you do that um, one of the there would be if you acquired a pigeon from overseas for example well, you're certainly not going to break that in you're not going to race that but if I've acquired a pigeon from overseas I've acquired it because I want the gene pool or I like the gene pool it's got to be very strong I'll therefore take a punt on putting in in the stock lot unraced but given the option, I would always want to race the pigeons and have them road tested before I put them into the stock lot. There have been instances I know where there's a lot of unraised pigeons have bred very good pigeons. But I think it's far outweighed by road tested pigeons that have proven themselves on the track. What would influence your decision to put a bird in a stock lot? Would it be confirmation or the pedigree of the bird? Without pedigree, um, the more winning genes at high level of competition you can have in your line of pigeons, the better. Uh, if you have a look at every line of the pedigree, and it's not easy to get, uh, you can either acquire these pigeons at, at some cost at an auction, or you can work your way through and breed them. It might take you years, but if you uh, looking at uh, putting a pigeon into your loft, Ge uh, genes, critically genes, no other question. Confirmation, yes you like to have it, but I'll put it to you simply, if someone showed you two hens, one is two years old, mated with uh, two cockbirds, bred five federation placings, she's plain, and that pigeon's not brilliant in the hand, if you compare it with the pigeon that handles as you'd expect it to be, a uh, lovely type, striking looking type, there's only bred homers in two years with two different cockpits, there's no question. Forget your judgement, the pedigree will tell you all. Certainly pedigree, uh, uh, far in advance of confirmation. What's the most common mistake that uh, you think pigeon flyers make? Well, having made plenty of them, I guess I'm pretty well qualified to talk about this, but I think your starting point is the most critical point. Where you start is where you end. And if you acquire a lot of pigeons when you're starting off in a hurry uh, from a lot of different sources and they're not the quality that you should be starting with, I think you lead yourself into a problem. And as I said before, it might take 
quite a bit of money. Uh, but if you can source out a proven pair of pigeons, a proven producers of producers, they'll pay you back. There's no question at all about that. If you can't spend a hell of a lot of money, uh, there are people in the pigeon community, some very good pigeon flyers, who must throw away their last round of eggs. And their last round of eggs off good pigeons, uh, if you can acquire them, use them. Uh, I think that gives you a running start if you do it that way. Um, so, most common mistakes, I think that's, that's a common mistake, but it's probably the most important one to rectify. If you can start well, you've got a real chance. You've got to be patient with your pigeons, you've got to be sensible with them, you've got to set them fair tasks, you've got to feed them properly. Uh, don't take the attitude, let them all up, the best ones will get home. Look at the conditions where you train and release your pigeons, but whatever pigeons you train, wherever you might release them, you've got to have the material when you start, and I think that's the most critical one. I was guilty of it, uh, and uh, I, I'd like to see people just be a bit more selective when they're starting with the birds. Grant, do you think uh, a pair of stock birds that don't breed good race birds, that are well credentialed in their pedigree, can go on, or the offspring of that, that pair can go on and breed um, good race birds? In other words, do you think the genes, or the winning genes, could skip a generation? I'm sure they can. Uh, I guess it's a matter of if you breed off a pair of pigeons or pigeons for a while and they don't produce at the first level down, you've got a reluctance to breed again down off them because they're not winners, they're not proven pigeons. Uh, if there's a very strong gene pool in that original pair of pigeons, yes it can happen, but I think on percentages if it's, and I'm not talking about an ideal world, if you could have every generation performing and doing something, you're better off. Uh, but yes, it, in answer to your question, it, it can happen. Grant, do you think sock sense is something that is learned over a period of time or is something that you're born with? I guess you can refine stock sense over a period of time as you get more used to having a look at pigeons and having a look at their characteristics and their features. You can hone a stock sense. I can recall one of Leon, my ex-club members, the late Harold Weber. He had a wonderful judgment of a pigeon, so did Roy Dangerfield. They didn't pay top dollars for a lot of these pigeons and they're pigeons that many of us wouldn't fancy, but they got good results with them. But I think largely it's, it's a bit of flair, it's something that you've got or you haven't got. Um, I haven't got the skill with it, I like to rely on pedigree more so than anything else because the pedigree doesn't lie to you, it tells you where the winning genes are. Uh, not only Harold Webber had a, a skill with picking race pigeons, stock pigeons like that, he was like that with uh, any other birds. He could, he could breed birds that other people couldn't breed in his aviary, so he, he just had a flair, he had a stock sense. So yeah, that would have been innate, that would have been uh, a bred stock sense. If you gave up racing for a few years and then you came back to it, how would you start up uh, your new race lot? Uh, really... Uh, just reinforcing what I said before, Phil, um, I would look for quality, not quantity. Be it a couple of pair of pigeons, I would seek those out, and that's the way I would go. If my judgment's right, results shouldn't be too far away, and you can then breed on down the track. Certainly, quality, couple of pair, not quantity.